Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing. Time for What Now America? I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's title is Biden says Putin must go. Then he did not. Uh, we've had some interesting declarative statements from President Joe Biden in the last week and a half. And two of them that come to mind is, number one, that uh, Putin is a war criminal. And the other declarative statement was that uh, Putin must go, can't remain. And the question is, were these unintentional comments that were off the cuff or were they planted and, and were intended to be stated by the president of the United States about Putin? And we're gonna talk about this and other things. And I, before we move on, I'd like to introduce our guests, Jay Fidel and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning. 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 Jay, going to Biden's comments, um, and I'm glad he said that Putin's a war criminal. I know it doesn't help in negotiations down the line, but I'm glad he said it. I'm not sure it was the right thing to say about uh, Putin must go because Putin's going to use those words against him and certainly to the Russian people against him. What are your thoughts about the two comments that Joe Biden has made? And in your opinion, were they intentional or just off the cuff gaps? First of all, there's no issue whatsoever that Putin is a war criminal. Correct. No issue. And in my opinion, I'll say it right here on Think Tech in public. He should, the Putin should go. So I think that's how uh, Joe Biden really feels. Uh, I think he was off script, but I think that's how he really feels. And so I feel, and I know you guys feel the same way. A lot of people feel the same way. Um, I suppose, um, you know, the argument you could have with him about that is it's not diplomatic. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't see that diplomacy really bears on this. Uh, Putin is killing a lot of people. Yeah, I would say war is not war. diplomatic. War is not diplomatic. And, and what Putin is doing is war crime. It is, it is killing women and children, hospitals, schools, everything. He's destroying the country. And we should talk about that, too. But bottom line is it's a true statement. And the bottom line is he should go. He's squashing what little democracy Russia had. He should go. Um, I know that um, you know, uh, Putin will you know, try to use that against him. But um, Well, let's, let's think, talk about think, in ways. One more point. Sure. I don't think the press should be complicit in attacking Biden about it. I think we have a leader. We have to follow the leader. He's the best leader we have. Let's not attack him over it. Let's go to the point that the Russians will use this. In what ways will the Russians use, particularly the one where he has to go, that statement? How will they use that against Joe Biden? Well, they'll attack Biden personally, but the fact is that they already do attack Biden personally. Uh, I suppose he, you know, he would love to assassinate Biden. Uh, he would love to bring, you know, America down. But you know what? He already wants to do that. That's his M.O. So, I, you know, it's like it's like this. I got to tell you the story. This, this is an alcove in the Holocaust Museum in Washington. And it's a, an exchange of letters by the War Department um, and the rabbinical uh, organization um, in 1944. And the rabbinical organization wrote to the War Department, said, would you please bomb Auschwitz? So they can't kill any more Jews in, in the ovens there. You know? And uh, lots of letters and the War Department was dragging its heels. And finally, they wrote back. And the War Department said to the rabbis, it said, <clears throat> we're really reluctant to bomb Auschwitz because we think it would make, and I'm quoting, we think it would make Herr Hitler angry. Oh, he wasn't angry until <sighs> then? He wasn't angry while he was destroying the Western world? He, this would make him angry. It's the same thing. You know, you can't bend over for, for a guy like Putin. He's a, he's a tyrant. And he's already angry. It doesn't matter if he gets more angry or less angry. He's already a monster. So eh, I, don't, I don't see anything to, to quibble about here, to talk about. If that's how Joe Biden feels, I'm with him. Good point, Jay. You knocked it out of the park. That was a great, uh, great point. Uh, reminds me of Churchill when uh, they were talking about negotiations with Hitler. And uh, Churchill said, I think he said, you know, how can you negotiate when your head's already in the mouth of the tiger? And uh, yeah, who cares if he's angry? Uh, good point. Excellent point. Right. Cynthia, so how will Putin, in your mind, use the statement about his... Um, 
he has to go. Uh, well, he tried to parlay that into, see, we told you they're trying to re do regime change here in Russia, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm defending the mother country. Uh, in ways, do you imagine that Putin will use uh, Biden's, Biden's words? I think it's exactly what you just said. He's, you know, already been claiming that one of the reasons they have to do this is because NATO has been encroaching, threateningly encroaching on Russian territory. So that's what he's going to say. But he's been lying from the beginning anyway. So, I mean, I'm with Jay. Why are we, and excuse my term, but why are we pussyfooting around with a man who is slaughtering civilians? Who cares if we make him mad? Why? Um, I, I agree also that the press has jumped on this thing to make Biden look so bad, like, oh, he's going to make such a mess of things by saying that as if it's not already a mess, as if there's really any hope of Putin um, doing anything that he says or promises the you know the corridors the humanitarian corridors he says we'll make them they'll stay safe then he bombs them you know he won't he says he won't bomb children and then he bombs you know schools and children's hospitals and orphanages and so why in the world would anyone look at joe biden and think what he said was wrong um you know I don't understand how anyone could think that it will escalate things because how can you escalate any further? It's not like he's going to start going into Poland now. As okay. it is, what he was doing was, you know, bombing right near Poland, you know, what, for 250 miles away from where Biden was at the moment while he was there. And, and this is another thing that I don't think people take into context when they realized what he was saying. He had just spent a whole day, more than a day, I think two days there, right? So a whole day of meeting with refugees, hearing story after story after story, horror story after horror story after horror story. And then he says that. Can you blame him for thinking that this man is a monster and he has to go? I mean, okay. He is I, I, I think all of us agree that his statements were, were spot on, even though they may have been unattended, but they were spot on. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't help President Biden when Anthony Blinken uh, tries to walk back the statement and then Joe Biden himself tries to walk it back. Uh, Jay, to your opinion on that point. Yeah, I was sorry to see Blinken try to walk it back. It was true to start. It was a, a statement that Biden should have made. If that's the way he felt, let him say it. Um, I don't care about the diplomatic impact, although I don't really think there is any, you know, Cynthia and I agree on that. So you know, the, the problem is the reaction to it. You know, the press says, oh my God, he just called him a war criminal. Oh my God. Uh, he just suggested he should be removed, you know, regime change. Oh my God. But you know, and, and of course, uh, Blinken, Lincoln walking it back is just like the press saying, oh, my God, he shouldn't have said that. I don't think that Lincoln should have walked it back. I don't think the press should be spending time criticizing, um, you know, Biden for what he said. It was right. true. Well, to that point, though, Jay, to that point, Lincoln did walk it back. And then President Biden walked it back. So they had a little huddle and somehow convinced the president of the United States that maybe he should walk it back. Because if you recall, Joe Biden said the following. He said, um, it's a personal opinion. It, that's how he walked it back. Yeah, I don't think he should have done that either. Okay. I said what I said. Uh, that's the way I feel. It's a true yep. statement. All yeah. of those things. He, he should have stuck with it. Now he looks, I'm sorry, this does have an effect. Now he looks weak. Exactly. And, 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 I, and I even heard GOP, uh, members of the GOP Congress say he should have just let it stay. Right. Uh, so <laughs> even the GOP thought the statements were correct. And, and, and you know what? Let's take a moment and just look at that. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, you look at the Biden administration and you say, well, he's a reasonable, decent, honest, fair person and all that. And sometimes you look and say, he's weak. He, you know, he doesn't stick with it. He doesn't speak his mind. Um, he doesn't call a spade a spade, you know, and, and this is really a problem with his administration. He's got to learn to be more forceful. 
Uh, and I find some of the things that this administration has done or not done to be no other than, nothing other than weak. So he's got to find a little strength here. Everybody's got him worried that he, if he says the wrong thing, we'll be in a nuclear war. That's poppycock. That's not going to happen. Um, so, you know, my, my feeling is um, that uh, it was really a mistake on his part to, to join the, the, the walk back. Uh, and yeah, he should learn well, how to be forceful. I want to use, I want to focus in on the word weak because what you and I say is indecisive and weak. Um, the critics, particularly Fox News and other news agencies, are using that as a foil to say that he's not weak, he's feeble, and he's he's not with it there mentally, and he's saying things that he has no business saying. And uh, I'll mention one. I'll cite one example: is that um, when President Biden was in the room with uh, the soldiers having pizza, and he said. You'll soon see when you get there, uh, you'll see the, the horrors here, or I'm, I'm paraphrasing, you'll see the horrors of, of people trying to throw themselves in front of tanks to stop the Russians. And Fox has jumped on this to say, well, that means U.S. troops are going to invade Ukraine. And so there's another walk back. He said, no, I never said that. I, I never said that. And if they were, they, we're talking about Russia, uh, Russia going into uh, Poland. Well, we know that's absurd because that's a NATO country. So what, I mean, I hate to say it, but Joe Biden is walking into some of these snares. And I, you may be correct, Jay, is that they've got him so um, super conscious about what he says and doesn't say that he's probably stumbling over some of his sentences. Well, before Cynthia responds, I can see she's ready. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I wanna, I wanna add um, this thought. Um, and that is that Fox News and the, GOP in general, you know, the right wing, um, you know, you have to remember at all times that their mission is to bring Biden down um, and they will criticize him for whatever they can find, anything, even things that are not worthy of criticism at all. Hey, so Jay, it's working. He's at 40 percent. Yeah, well, it is working and it's, it's tragic that he's not stronger, um, you know, to deal with it. But and I think we always have to remember that Fox News and the right wing are going to criticize him. They just look for things to criticize him. To the extent there was any, what do you call it, bi bilateralism, bipartisanship in, in supporting the war on Ukraine, uh, the, the fickle finger of the media has moved on. Mm -hmm. And now you get to see you know, what's behind the mask. Bipartisan works as long as it helps them. But when they when they have a chance, they go back to their default position, which is attack Biden on everything. And we're going to see we're going to see them do that. And, you know, us three, we know we understand. We understand that's their M.O. Unfortunately, a lot of the people in this country um, are affected by Fox News and are affected by the media that attack Biden and make him look weak. And that's why. Um, his popularity is down, not because he's not a decent, you know, good human being, but because he looks weak and because the, both the media and, and the, 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 the uh, conservatives are attacking him over looking weak. Okay, Jay, thank you. Be hey, before we go on to Cynthia, um, can we just agree that we should stop referring to Fox News as Fox News and just call it Fox Entertainment? Uh, that'd make me feel a whole lot better. Anyway, Cynthia, to your, to your, you wanted to say something. Jay accurately uh, identified your willingness to speak out on this particular subject. Go ahead. Well, specifically on the gaffe about um, that you'll see when you get there. Mm -hmm. um, he was talking to a, a group of soldiers, once again, taken out of context, right? He was talking to a group of soldiers that were still on the base in Warsaw, and they were about to be going out to the front, to the to the border, to be helping with the humanitarian efforts. So when he says you're going to see women and children, that's what he was talking about. Of course. Well, well he, hang on now. He said you're going to see women and children throw themselves in front of tanks. Yeah. Um, and, that, and, that's happening in Ukraine, not in Poland. Well, yes, I agree with that. These okay, are so it have... really wasn't taken out of context. I hate to say oh. it, but this was clearly a gaffe. Well, no, but the point is, if he's walking back things, sorry, I, I didn't want to... Go ahead. But if go he's ahead. walking back things, 
Okay, everybody knows that's disingenuous. Oh, he's walking it back, which means A, um, he doesn't like what he said before, and B, he's really straining to distance himself. And so you get hit on two elements of credibility when you walk back. Correct. Everybody Why knows. walk it back then, Jay? Why is he walking it back? He shouldn't be. Don't ask me. Ask him. Well, who's giving him the, the advice? Is it Blinken or who's giving them the advice to walk it back? Could be Ron, Ron Klain, uh, one of his advisors, chief of staff in the White House. Um, but there, it's not good advice. You ought to learn to be more affirmative about these things and not walk anything back. When you walk it back, you, you attack what you said in the first place, and you also look disingenuous in the second place. It both points of weakness. And I can see Fox News capital, capitalizing on both. Yeah, and they did. I, I saw it with my own eyes, and I thought, well, they scored one on this one because um, they really they really called it on them. So, uh, Cynthia, what's your opinion about um, how's Joe Biden doing, other than a couple of these, these walkbacks? How's he doing on the messaging about the Ukraine war and his ability to um, communicate effectively with NATO and, and get their alliance uh, in, in, in top shape? Okay, messaging, which is just a perfect question for me right now. I lose my mind when I listen to Anthony Blinken speak. I, he's supposed to be a communication representative guy, right? And he says, ah, uh, um, ah, uh, ah, uh, um, every third word he says, ah, uh, um. Well, kind of like me. No, not like you. No, not like you. <laughs> Nothing like you. <laughs> And it drives okay. me crazy because what happens is he sounds like an idiot that doesn't know what he's talking about. So every time something gets walked back and then he gets questioned, he sounds sort of okay when he's reading a speech. But as soon as he starts to talk to people, he sounds like he's lying and looking for something to say because he's going, uh, um... And you know we uh, um, we went over there and then we did a uh, um, um, uh, you know, it's like every five seconds and it it drives me crazy. So in messaging that I don't know why someone hasn't sat him down and made him practice to stop saying um if he has to slow down his speech if he has to do whatever he has to do to stop looking like an idiot and to stop sounding like he doesn't know what he's talking about or that he's lying and making stuff up as he goes, because that's the way he comes across. And I'm on their side. And yet still it comes across that way to me. So you can imagine how he comes across to other people too. Yeah. You, want to, you want to see passion. You want to yeah. see commitment. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, um, it's like my, my criminal law professor, Gerhard O.W. Muller, in my first year of law school. He said, the legislature is really missing the boat. When they pass a, a bill, um, they should say at the bottom, we mean it. And, um, and, and if they really mean it, they should say at the bottom, no, we're not kidding. We really mean it. It's going to be in the bill. <laughs> and so it's the same thing here. You know, I would like to see Tony Blinken mean it. Uh, it sounds bureaucratic the way he puts it. And frankly, to some extent, that's the way Biden is, too. I'd like to see him raise his voice, the two of them. Yeah. Hey, before I leave this topic, I want you to rate um, both messaging from Biden, not Blinken, uh, messaging, not necessary delivery, but messaging. Uh, how's, how's Joe Biden doing? Uh, Cynthia, give him, a, give him a score between one and 100. Um, I think he's doing about a 75, 80. And, okay. and I didn't hear him walk it back. I heard him say, I absolutely, when he was being interviewed and um, questioned about it in a press conference, and he said, no, I absolutely stand by what I said. I stand by what I said. Well, I saw him I at the podium saying it was a personal opinion. Change. But he said, I don't mean it's a policy change, that we're changing any policy. I'm just saying that that's what should happen. And I stand by my statement. And so I don't think he did walk it back. And um, I think everybody around him walked it back. And that made him look even more, you know, what's going on? Get, everybody get on the same page. Because it seems like they're not on the same page. And that's what would boost him up to a 90 in my in my book. All right, Jay, your rating. I'll of... give him a higher rating than Cynthia because he said it in the first place. I give him a low rating on walking it back and allowing his staff to walk it back. But let me add one other thing. 
is uh, you want to see unanimity in the administration. Now with Trump, you know, he, he would he would force unanimity. He would be all over anybody who disagreed. He'd fire him. And that was his style. <clears throat> but you know what what we have here, and I don't know if it's on your list of points to cover today, Tim. Um, what we have here is is this extraordinary attorney general who is AWOL, who isn't, you know, doing the job. He's not doing the job. Uh, and he is getting virtually nothing done in terms of the insurrection. And uh, you find that the, the, the arguments by his staff in court leading to that 34-page uh, opinion the other day uh, that found that Trump had violated, uh, you know, a variety of, of criminal statutes in the insurrection, those guys were from the Department of Justice, Merrick Garland's department, and they had evidence enough to convince a judge of that. So I don't understand why Merrick Garland can't do an investigation of it. He has the power, but he hasn't done anything about as far as he got, which was what a month or two ago is we're going to investigate this no matter where it leads. Well, you could fool me. In terms of messaging, okay, what you get is he's actually pulling the rug out from Biden and he's not doing anything. And his messaging is um, it's the same thing we got from Bob Mueller, you know, in the Mueller report. It's, you know, uh, it's like, um, we'll hear about this later. We're, you know, involved in this very mysterious process. We can't tell you anything about it. And, um, and if you want to have confidence, um, don't look to us. And I think that's terrible. And I think it does reflect on Biden. And I think Biden should tell the man, get off your Ecole and do something. Right. <laughs> All right. That leads us to the next uh, topic here. And to you, Jay, uh, you know, Richard Nixon and his secretary, Rosemary Wood, they, they mysteriously lost 18 minutes of critical transcript, um, as you know. And that was the talk of the town. And it was more than just messaging. It was a lack of messaging, 18 minutes of it. Uh, we have a new report that uh, during January 6th, for a predominant part of the day, seven hours and 37 minutes, all phone logs from the White House are not available. They're, not, they're missing. There's nothing. <laughs> uh, that seems quite odd, given the, the, the day. And they know that Donald Trump spoke to eight individuals in the morning and 12 people in the afternoon, yet there isn't a single phone record of it. What do we got going here, Jay? Is this another Rosemary Wood uh, doing the, the Rosemary Wood reach and accidentally erasing 18 minutes? Or um, is this just, um, they weren't using the phones at all. They were using other phones. They were using perhaps uh, potentially burner phones or, or other phones from other people. What, what, what do we have going on here? Wow. Will everybody who is surprised by this revelation please fall off your chair right now? <laughs> I don't see anybody falling off his or her chair, do I? Um, so uh, you're going you're gonna to try to tell me in a minute that it is entirely possible uh, that Donald Trump is lying about the uh, about the. Uh, okay, well, let's go to our friend Merrill Garland, the Attorney General of the United States. Surely this will catch his attention. It's, well, it's a dark hole. What are you going to do about the 18 minutes? You know, don't have it. Well, that's Nixon, but I'm talking about the seven hours and 37 minutes. What are you going to do about it? You don't have it. You, you can't make it up. Uh, it strikes me that he was destroying records. Well, isn't that, that against that, the law to, to destroy evidence and certainly the Presidential uh, Records Act and, uh, you know, a, a number of things? A lot uh, of you things. know, we could also tag team on all the stuff that he's, he hauled off to Mar-a-Lago um, that belonged in the archives. Yep. Have you heard a peep from Merrick about that? Not a peep. No. And I mean, and that's an open and shut slam dunk. There's lots of open and shut slam dunks, including the, as I said before, you know, the evidence that was submitted to that judge who wrote the 34 page opinion, finding that Trump had violated criminal law in a number of ways. So what I'm saying is, and I think we agree, is that um, this, this should be, could be uh, handled, investigated, prosecuted, he can call a grand jury, he can, he can start it up. It's going to take a long time anyway. There'll be a lot of, as you know, a lot of machinations that Trump will interpose to try to stop him. But he's not doing anything, as far as I can see. So yes, um, there's the, the eight hours of, of, uh, of phone logs are gone. They're probably not coming back. But it's clear 
that Trump has violated the law yet again. And it's up to our Department of Justice to make a case out of that. And regrettably, they're not. And this has, let me go one step further. This has a huge effect on the country because both sides of the aisle can and are saying, these guys are ineffective. They, they can't tie their own shoelaces. This is obvious violations of law here, and they haven't done anything. They've done the small potatoes, you know, the guys who were in the insurrection, and they gave them misdemeanor charges and, and put them on probation or something. Peanuts. Peanuts. They haven't gone any higher than that. And it's been 16 months now. Um, we haven't heard a word peep. And all these other things are coming out. They're coming out. That the newspaper reporters are doing um, Merrick Garland's investigation for him. They're handing him the stuff on a platter, and he's doing nothing. <clears throat> so I, I think we have a real problem. As I said before, Biden orders, you know, take the bull by the horns and say, Merrick, you've got to do something. Get down, get, get, your, get your body down in my office now. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly, you know, what decisions to make, but we need action, and we need it right now, or the public is going to lose Well, confidence. didn't Biden say early on in his presidency <laughs> that the AGs was hands off? Yeah, but that doesn't mean he can't say, I want some action. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't, I, I, you know, I'm not going to give you the specifics of what to do. I'm just telling you, I want you to, you know, probably he said to uh, Merrick Garland, I want you to tell them that you're investigating right up to the top. And Merrick Garland did that. And that was really not, not effective. That was not strong messaging at all. And nothing happened before or after that little comment that Merrick Garland made. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can take the position. You don't want to talk to your AG, and that's very nice of you. Um, but that, it's, not, it's not appropriate right now, in my opinion. He should be telling them, do something, man. The, the whole world is waiting on you. Don't be a Bob Mueller here. Cynthia, your thoughts about whether this uh, almost eight hours is a nothing burger or is it as serious as the 18 minutes was in the Nixon uh, Watergate um, investigation? Oh, it is so much more significant than those 18 minutes. Um, and hopefully they're going to be able to backfill with other people because they've got the phone records of the people that he talked to. So if they know, that, you know, if they can go backwards from the other person and find out that they, it did go into the White House phone or did it go to another cell phone. They can trace it from the other side, I think. So I don't think it means there's a stone wall there because you got Jim Jordan and Mark Meadows and all these other, Bo Brooks, all these other people calling Trump during that time. So um, they know they've got those those outgoing calls there's there's a way to find out where they went well i suspect that's how this whole thing came to light is they know they have the transcripts from kevin mccarthy uh they know that tommy tuberville from alabama and mike lee from utah mike pence uh so yes they they know these things well the way they got him was in the the bunch of stuff that was that trump was fighting to try to not get released and then when he lost and it did get released it showed up with these missing seven hours and so they're working now to try to do that backfilling thing. Um, at least that's what uh, Adam Schiff was saying in an interview last night. Um, but, you know, as far as Merrick Garland goes, we know he is rooted in the Federalist Society. He is Mr. Conservative. Conservatives move slowly. He's also an academic. Academics like to move slowly and talk about everything and work at it from every side and then move forward. So we got he got those two things that make him be a slow mover, right? And then he goes, when he came out and he said, I'm doing investigations, he also in that same day said, I'm not going to comment on them. So he's already made it clear he's not going to tell us anything about what's going on. Now, is he using that as cover to not really do anything? Or is he really doing stuff and, you know, behind the scenes? I, I don't know. And I don't trust him because of where his background is from. Well, that might be to Jay's point. Let's see what you're doing. Or don't show us what you're doing, but just give us an update on what's going on. I, I think Jay's well-founded to say it appears nothing's going going on so exactly. hey we've run out of time um let's go around the table and just get last thoughts last last words jay with you 
okay, I, I think there's a lot here, and here's my, my track of it. Um, we've established today that there were problems in Mudville, Washington. Okay? <laughs> we've established that um, the, the guys on, on the right side of, 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 the, of the Congress are going to attack Biden no matter what he does. And he looks bad and his approval rating is down. Okay? At the same time, although it doesn't have to be, in my opinion, uh, at the same time, Biden is out there dealing with Ukraine and Eastern Europe and NATO and trying to get those guys into a firm, long lasting, you know, sustainable coalition that will help keep the peace after Ukraine, whatever that is. And also, you know, to make sure that that these talks to the extent they go anywhere. And that's another show, isn't it? Um, my PS on that is they're not going to go anywhere. There's, there's pathology involved, but not not sincerity. The Russians will never make a legitimate deal. Sorry, they're pathological. Putin is pathological. But anyway, so you, you have these very difficult issues in Europe and in Istanbul, and he's got to be strong for that. He's got to be strong to hold the coalition together, uh, to hold NATO together, to have them actually make you know, believable threats to uh, Russia, um, you know, to, 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 to face down Putin in every way possible, to uh, continue the sanctions, make more sanctions, um, and, and to have, and to insist on a, any settlement process uh, that it should be legitimate and not, and not, you know, just manipulative. So the problem is, and this is my point, so what happens in the U.S., to undermine Biden's reputation, his popularity. Uh, what happens with Biden when he doesn't do strong things, when he walks things back, undermines what he's doing in Europe with NATO and the, U, the, the EU and with the people in Ukraine and so forth. And we, uh, the picture is beginning to draw now as we see this go forward over a month now. It's, he's, he, he can only go so far. He's only willing to go so far and he only has so much clout with the Europeans. <clears throat> and what I worry about is that if he has a hard time in the 2024 election, or for that matter, if the Democrats have a hard time in the 2022 election coming up in six months, that further pulls the rug out from under Biden. He's less uh, influential in Europe and the world. He's less influential with Putin. And we are going to see a, a real effect from that. And I, I, uh, this country is not going to be able to pull it off if we run our own president down. All right, Cynthia, you get the last word today. Okay. My biggest fear right now, because Merrick Garland has been just dragging his feet, that it's going to get too close to the 22 election. And so he's going to say, I can't do anything right now because it's too close to the 22 election, right? Like we've seen in the past when they don't, they say, well, we're not going to do something because it's too close to the election. But then hopefully somebody will remind him of what James Comey did to Hillary Clinton eight days before the election. So, you know, but that's what the Republicans like to do. They like to say, oh, it's too close to, you know, to the election. And they don't want that information to come out. So I'm afraid that the Republicans are going to start crying for, oh, it's too close, you know, too close, too close. And Merrick Garland will go, okay, and he'll, you know, back off. And then all of these important things that need to come out, the truth of what happened on January 6th won't come out at all. Because once, if they don't, if the American people don't get to see it before the 22 election and the, and the Republicans take over, nobody's going to see anything. And that's what scares me the most. Excellent point, Cynthia. Yeah, that's an excellent is. point. Yeah, that's why maybe the select committee needs to publish their, their findings by no later than mid-May. I agree. Okay, we have run out of time. I want to thank Jay Fidel, Cynthia Lee Sinclair for joining us on What Now America. Please join us next Wednesday at 11 o'clock. And until then, I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and we hope to see you.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.